One of the biggest indicators of whether or not people will learn a foreign language is the amount of time they spend with it. I want to share with you one of my favorite quotes on the talent of time and how I practically gather up the fragments of time so I can have more contact with Spanish throughout the day. My name is Franklin and this is First1000Hours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it through your first thousand hours. One of my favorite books is called Christ Object Lessons, and it has been my tradition since 2017 to read and reread a chapter in Christ Object Lessons called Talents at the beginning of the year. I do that because this chapter challenges me to cultivate and develop a positive God honoring lifestyle, which is beneficial to myself and helps me be a blessing to others. The talents chapter is based on the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 13 through 30. In the chapter of the talents, it covers talents such as speech, influence, health, strength, money, mental faculties, and time. Just one paragraph alone in the section on the talent of time is very useful for language learners. Christ Object Lessons, page 343 says, Upon the right improvement of our time depends our success in acquiring knowledge and mental culture. The cultivation of the intellect need not be prevented by poverty, humble origin, or unfavorable surroundings. Only let the moments be treasured. A few moments here and a few there that might be frittered away in aimless talk. The morning hours so often wasted in bed. The time spent in traveling on trams or railway cars or waiting at the station. The moments of waiting for meals, waiting for those who are tardy in keeping an appointment. If a book were kept at hand and these fragments of time were improved in study, reading, or careful thought, what might not be accomplished? A resolute purpose, persistent industry, and careful economy of time will enable men to acquire knowledge and mental discipline which will qualify them for almost any position of influence and usefulness. I just want to analyze the quote I just read. What helps us to acquire knowledge and mental culture? The right improvement of our time. Time is a gift that God gives everyone. The rich and poor alike only have 24 hours in a day. This is very encouraging to me because what I take from this quote is even if I'm not a millionaire, that doesn't prevent me from having a cultivated mind. Again, that quote says the cultivation of the intellect need not be prevented by poverty, humble origin or unfavorable surroundings. Only let the moments be treasured. Therefore, Lack of means or unfavorable surroundings shouldn't be an excuse as to why I can't have a cultivated, educated mind. What I need to do, however, is know how to improve my time. If you listen to my podcast, How Long Does It Take to Learn a Foreign Language? You know why it's good to spend at least one hour, six days a week, reading and listening to things in your target language and speaking and writing when you have opportunity. The Christ Object Lessons quote is dynamite to me because it emphasized very practical things we can do to seize the moments that many times are wasted. The time spent in aimless talk, sleeping in, traveling, or waiting on others can be put to good use. If a book were kept at hand and these fragments of time were improved in study, reading, or careful thought, what might not be accomplished? A resolute purpose, persistent industry, and careful economy of time will enable men to acquire knowledge and mental discipline, which will qualify them for almost any position of influence and usefulness. So, as you approach a new day, do you have a resolute purpose? Are you persistent in your pursuits? Do you use time wisely? These are some of the qualities which help men and women be qualified for almost any position of influence and usefulness. I shared my thoughts on just one small paragraph 
from the amazing chapter on the talents in Christ Object Lessons. I will include a link in the show notes of this podcast on where you can read the rest of the chapter and even the whole book for free. With my 1,000 hour language learning marathon with Spanish, I've desired more and more for me to use Spanish in a similar way that I use my native tongue, English. For me, English is not a study, but a tool. It's a tool that I use every day to gain more knowledge and wisdom on a variety of topics and to communicate with others. English is so useful to me that even if I'm very busy with a lot of activities, I still manage to find time to use it. Therefore, I've sought to follow my interests with Spanish so that it too can be more and more of a useful tool for me like English is. This mentality also helps me to improve my time with Spanish throughout the day because just like I use English, I seek to use Spanish in multiple different settings throughout the day. In the morning, before I go to work, I usually have already spent at least 30 to 40 minutes reading something in Spanish. Many times I use Link to read things in Spanish with understanding. And I like that I can import whatever material I want into Link so that I can read whatever I'm interested in. I will post an affiliate link of Link in the show notes of this podcast so you can find out more about it and use it as well. I like to read the Bible and related Christian books. Often the Christian books that I now read outside of the Bible are in Spanish. Earlier in 2018, I had imagined that I would come to a point where I would switch this reading habit that I've primarily done in English for many years into a Spanish one. And I was able to make that transition after I read my first Spanish book, El Camino a Cristo, and started using Link. I'm not saying I will never read a Christian book in English, but as a habit, I now read Christian books in Spanish. With this transition, I really didn't carve out any extra time to use Spanish. I have been able to convert the time I had already dedicated for reading to reading things in Spanish. Many times in the evening, I might also spend anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes reading a Christian book in Spanish as well. It takes me a 50 minute drive one way to get to my English speaking church. I used to live closer to this church, but I moved and I've gone to it over the years because it's been a blessing to me. I usually go to that church two times in the week. This means I almost spend 3.5 hours in the car each week to go to church alone. Many times, at least for half of my commute, I listen to sermons or health talks in Spanish on a variety of different subjects. I don't have a lot of cellular data on my Android phone, so I just download a bunch of messages I want to hear before I leave my place, and I listen to them while I'm on the go. I have an older car that doesn't have a Bluetooth setup, so I bought some Bluetooth headphones that I connect with my phone. I found that headphones help me to hear Spanish audio better, which helps me understand more of what is being said. Also, it takes me around six minutes to get to work. Sometimes I do listen to my car radio, but I've also sometimes tried to be intentional about listening to things in Spanish, even when I drive to work on this very short commute. I go to work and I come home for lunch during my lunch break, and then I go back to work. This means during the workday, I usually spend 24 minutes in the car, especially outside of the winter months. I like to take a walk in the state park, which I do for 20 to 25 minutes or so. It's a good way for me to get some sunshine, fresh air, and exercise. At the same time, I use my Bluetooth headphones so that I can listen to things in Spanish. I have started doing some step exercises indoors to increase my aerobic exercise and to really get my blood moving. While I'm doing that for around 25 to 30 minutes, which includes my stretching and break intervals, I sometimes am watching a Spanish YouTube video. I go to Walmart and other stores, and I thought for some time that I probably could increase the time I spent with Spanish if I wore my Bluetooth headphones into these stores. However, initially, I was afraid of the idea. I think it's more common to see people wearing headphones while they're walking in the park, but it's more of a rarity to see someone wearing headphones in a grocery store. I was pretty concerned about what people would think of me. 
Would they think I was into rap music or something if they saw me wearing headphones in the store? This thought stopped me from wearing my headphones inside of a store for several months. However, as I thought about it more, I realized that my concern of what people would think about me was actually hindering me from getting to my goal of spending my first thousand hours with Spanish faster. I reasoned to myself that in my town, most people aren't trying to learn a foreign language. Therefore, they're not going to make the same decisions that I'm making. Also, in order for me to get uncommon results in language learning, sometimes I have to do uncommon things. I sometimes spend 30 to 60 minutes in a grocery store. So in the midst of me walking through the aisles, I sometimes put my headphones on and listen to things in Spanish. In between me making sure I get things from my grocery list, I focus on Spanish. I think it's very cool that my Spanish education can be this mobile. I have more practical ways that I want to share with you in a future podcast about how I apply the talent of time to learn Spanish. My name is Franklin, and this is FirstThousandHours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it. Do your first thousand hours.